Okay, guys, I walk my tomato plant patch every day, several times a day, looking for worms, looking for anything that's out of the ordinary. I walked through here last night, came back early this morning. This is what I found early this morning. See how big these worms get? They were not like this yesterday. This plant was not like this. Look right here. Here's another one right there. This is why, I mean, this is the damage. I mean, look at the leaves. Here, here, and this right here. Let me show you this. This is what their, their crap looks like whenever they go to the bathroom. It's little green pod-looking pieces that kind of resembles, um, I'm not sure what it resembles, resembles a barrel, kind of like little barrels. I saw those on the ground, and I began looking. And what we do, well, let me show you some of the damage here. See this tomato here? They've already ate the side out of this tomato, so that's got to go. We can't leave that on there because that will never, ever make a tomato. It's it's done been ate into and ruined, so we have to get rid of it. And we just look at the damage on the plant. They go, they've ate the tips of the flowers off there. They've ate these stems off. The leaves have all been eaten off. Here, you know, here. When you see this sign, go ahead and start looking because they're here now. One of the one of the telltales to tomato worms or horn worms, whatever you want to call them, is early in the morning when it's cool. They will be in the very tops of your tomato plants. During the day when the sun's out, they'll be down in the plant somewhere trying to escape the heat of the sun. So. What we do is we come through here, and when you touch them, they'll usually just fall off. But now they're going to give out a green substance that is a defense mechanism for them. Whenever you first pick up one, he will usually try to defend himself by giving off a green substance. See this stuff getting in the palm of my hand here? That's their defense mechanism. That's a very bitter substance that they give off to hopefully make other creatures leave them alone. But now what we do with these, these make excellent chicken feed. We, we throw them in a bucket when we get through, and we take them and we feed them to our chickens because it gives them more protein um, from just having them. Plus it just gets them out of the garden so they do not multiply anymore. So we see that, see how they do? They'll start twisting and curling. But this is what a green hornworm looks like. And if you listen, let me see if I can get them to do it again. Let me get to the mic. You hear that clicking noise? That clicking noise is another defense mechanism they have. So, thought I'd throw this out there to y'all and show you you know some of this this is one thing you want to do every day a couple of three times a day walk this garden and look for these because in one day they can strip a whole plant now this i caught this has only been like maybe 10 hours i caught them before they got too much damage done so you want to make sure you do this every day we're back in the tomato patch again this morning uh, it is early in the morning. It's 5.50 this morning. Um, what we're trying to do now that we have tomatoes beginning to get ripe is they need additional fertilizer and they need the loosening of the root system. They need air aeration into the ground. And rather than using a broad fork, I, have to, I take my potato fork that I have here and I stick it in the ground. Not close to the plant, but way out away from it. And I push it down. I just kind of, I just kind of break the ground a little bit on a couple of sides of the tomato. That kind of helps to aerate the soil a little bit and keep it where it's not quite so packy, way away from the plant. You can actually see the ground move way away from the plant, all the way to the plant. This kind of helps keep air going into the soil because we're fixing to start fertilizing and it, it just makes it a lot easier for the fertilizer to get down into the roots when we water it don't just beat up and run across the ground so 
Okay, we go through in our, you know, also this time, you know, I don't, we've got some leaves and everything down for our back to nature gardening, but there's weeds that come up in here. Now's a good time to just go ahead and try to get all this stuff pulled up out of here and see if you can kind of get cleaned up around the plants before you go to fertilizing because you really don't want weeds getting all your fertilized. And some of this stuff we will take to the chickens. We'll take the clovers and the sorrel uh, to our chickens because they love the yellow sorrel. But we just try to take this time to, uh, to clean up around our plants also. Now once we've cleaned up like this side here, there's not much in the aisles. We, I mean, we got to go back with the hoe and kind of clean up a little bit underneath the leaves where it's come up, but, you know, there's not a lot. But what we do see coming up, like here we have, we have this clover system that comes up here. It comes up native to our land. It's a, we call it a white clover. It's a wild clover. All of our animals love it. So we take it as we go through the gardens and we pull it up and we stick it in a pile to feed to the animals. Now, as we do a plant, what we'll do is come in here and we'll rake a back. We'll rake back our leaves. I know we don't want to get too close to the plant. But remember, we've just took our fork and broke this ground up. So what we'll do is come out here away from the plant and we'll break it up a little bit. Because see, there's roots in all this. And we have, and we're using a commercial fertilized mix here because we just don't have enough animal fertilized this time of the year. And we'll just sprinkle a little bit into the ground and we'll cover it back up. You know, that kind of helps our, our plant along with a little bit of well-balanced nutrition. I know it's not completely organic, but right now we have to get the tomatoes where they get plenty of nutrition. You can see they're starting to get that tint of red. So we want to make sure right now that we get them with ample nutrition. And we do have some suckers coming out down here. Now, now that the plants are reaching the tops of the cages, that's okay for us to, uh, to let some suckers come out inside the cage now and start filling the cage up now that we've got our height because these are interdeterminants. And with an interdeterminate tomato here in the south, we want to get the height first, then let our foliage come out to do our protecting um, of the fruit. Okay, we got a look here under our tomato plant, and yes, we have our first tomato coming in. Oh, we got a spot on one side of it, but that's okay. That doesn't hurt it. We can still use it. Um, we got one here. Now here I'll tell you what, we can't leave our tomatoes on the plants here till they ripen. Simply because of stuff like this. The, the bugs will try to get to them. So this one here happened to slip by us and stayed on there longer than it should. But it's not hurt, still a good tomato. But what we're going to do is go through the patch and we're going to look at any of them that's starting to turn pretty good. We're going to go ahead and get them off and try to get them in the house and let them ripen inside where there's no insect problems. That one's starting to turn. pretty nice pretty Amish paste
show you all the size of some of our tomatoes. Look at that thing. I've got big hands, and these tomatoes are, they fill up my whole hand. And this is not even one of our better plants. That's how big the tomatoes are getting. Here's some more of our tomatoes. Look how big those tomatoes are in my hand. They're still green. They haven't even started turning ripe yet. They're coming all the way up the plant. I mean, they're big old tomatoes. Lots of big tomatoes. These are the yellow pear tomatoes from the homestead box. These things are loaded right there. I put the vine back together. It was bent over during the storm. It's still producing. I mean, look at this. All the way up still has tomatoes. Isn't that awesome? The leaves are hiding them, but you see. And these things are in tags. Even as high up as right here. We've got it tied to this tree. Plus we have a stake. We have chard in the bottom. This one is doing excellent. I wanted to show y'all some of the reasons why I say what I say about not leaving leaves on tomato plants down south. Now these are interdeterminants. You have to understand there's a difference. You don't want to take the leaves off of determinants too much, but an interdeterminant like these, I'm going to show you if one that can pan down here, I'm going to show you what happens. This is what happens when you leave the leaves on them. Down south, our humidity is so high that if you don't have good airflow through these plants and take some of these leaves off, this is what's going to happen. See how these viruses is done hit? It's starting to come up. It always starts from the bottom and going up and it will kill the whole plant. So you've got to, this stuff has got to go. If you live in a southern climate, you can't, you can't leave leaves on the bottom of your plants. All this stuff has got to come off or either you will lose your plants to diseases. Now I let this one go. I probably should have done took it out. I let it go just to prove my point. And I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to salvage this plant by getting some of these leaves out of here. But you see all that? That's just disease. And it starts from the ground up. These leaves have got that virus in them that comes from a lack of airflow through the plants. You know, it's just one of them things that you've got to have off of here if you're going to make it in a southern climate. Now I know the tomatoes are exposed now but we're gonna let the sucker sprouts come back out and start to cover them. It's just that I've got to go up these plants. It's not just this plant. One that looks behind me you can see there's another plant right here. We left the leaves toward the bottom and this high humidity we have they've just got to go. You can't, it just won't work down south. I know these universities teach all this stuff, but they're spraying with all kinds of chemicals and stuff like that, and we don't use chemicals on ours. We have to, we have to take care of ours the best way that we can without the use of chemicals on them. Now we're going to try, see if we can't get a little bit more of these off of here before we mess around and lose a plant. We've been out picking blueberries and I come home to walk through my tomato patch and we already finding this this morning. This is just since yesterday. The humidity today is about 90% and it's cloudy. Perfect conditions to create these viruses. Now Maybe the top half of this plant will survive. We got some airflow underneath it. 
we got some we got to go down through here we got several other plants we've got to take care of so one right here behind her here's some more leaves you see how yellow those leaves get the viruses and how they get started on them got to get them off of here it ain't cause of lack of water because I've been watering them every day Now you take these plants like this where I've done cut a lot of the leaves off of the lower parts of them and all up through the plant. I go through here and periodically just take leaves out. This one doesn't seem to be suffering as bad. Some of these I just come through randomly and just I'll take an inside leaf out so that air can get through these plants. These all seem to be doing okay right now. Depends on this humidity. <laughs> 